you know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, I guess. It's in my head. All right. Hey there, creepy peeps, and welcome to another very stale movie review. Um, part of my little horror movie marathon that I have going on this month um, where I am going through a list of must-see horror movies that I've never seen so don't judge me I haven't seen it up until this point I've seen them now though okay that's what counts Today we're going to be talking about the cabinet of dr. Caligari directed by Robert Vina is that how you would say his last name? I don't know, not very good at German. And my only German friend I could consult is in South Korea right now, so I can't consult her. Shit. This and uh, Nosferatu, which I talked about yesterday, were definitely two of the most recommended horror movies whenever I was looking for like must-see horror movies. Everyone recommends this one as well, uh, <laughs> saying it is like a staple horror movie that everyone should see. And I can see why, because I, I talked about this a little bit when I was talking about Nosferatu, but the style of this movie I can definitely see has had some influence on directors that are still making movies today. So I thought that was really cool to kind of see that influence. Um, so The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is about, um, did I write down his name? Frederick, um, <laughs> who encounters uh, at a carnival, a man who calls himself Dr. Caligari and Dr. Caligari's whole show is show or attraction in this carnival is centered around a somnambulist. I don't know how you say it, but basically the somnambulist Cesar. Cesar is what his name is, Cesar. It'd be easier to refer to him that way. Uh, <laughs> is like sleeping all of the time or most of the time and he can like see the future and things like that so that's like the whole attraction uh, so they go uh, Frederick and his friend go see this show and his friend is told that he is going to die before the Sun comes up or whatever um, so everyone thinks that dr. Caligari is making Cesar go around and murder people or that Cesar is like on a rampage and killing people. So it's kind of about trying to catch Dr. Caligari. And of course a girl gets caught up in this, Jane. Um, and I almost got kind of like a Frankenstein kind of feel for it. Like Cesar's look almost looked very like classic Frankenstein-ish, like kind of very tall deep set eyes kind of thing, all black. Um, and he like kidnaps Jane and stuff. And I don't know where I got Frankenstein from that. I don't know. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Very Beauty and the Beast-ish, I guess, kind of is what I was trying to say. Or it was interesting. Uh, <laughs> the this was probably one of the more interesting silent films I've seen. The font was very interesting. I don't know if the font used on like the title cards was like the original kind of one or that was like added in later, but it was kind of hard to read. So I had an interesting time trying to watch the movie, but I liked the story. I really liked the, um, the bookend, the opening and the end bits, which are, you kind of start off you start off with Frederick and he's telling this story and so, you know, and then we get into the bulk of the movie which we understand as Frederick telling the story to somebody. And then at the end of it, it turns out that 
Frederick is in a mental institution. So he's just rambling on telling the story and then all the characters that we've seen in the movie are either patients in the hospital or physicians and doctors. So Dr. Caligari is his is Frederick's doctor and you know obviously you know Frederick is so delusional he thinks that he is a bad person. So it was an interesting ending, you know, to the movie. You think that it's all been resolved and Dr. Caligari has been caught and then you're reminded that somebody is telling a story and then that story ends up being like a delusion of a crazy person. Um, <laughs> so I kind of liked it. I kind of, it reminded me of The Wizard of Oz a little bit, how, uh, you know, all the characters were like in court, you know, like they're in his head, so they're playing characters in his head as well as, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it's cool, I really like the music as well. The score, the score was really cool. It was very eerie in like a rock and roll kind of way. Like it almost had like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm getting with this, where I'm going with this. Uh, it had a very like kind of hard, edgy kind of feel to it, which was cool. I like the music. Um, and then once you learn at the end that Frederick is psychotic, like the music fits a little bit more. It's very like staccato almost and it changes a lot and goes a lot of different places musically. So it makes sense. Like all of a sudden the music kind of makes sense like that you're in the mind of a crazy person. Um, this movie, as well as Nosferatu, were part of a movement known as German Expressionism. Um, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is probably the best example of a German Expressionist movie, which, like I said before, is supposed to be very surreal and not based in reality, so a characteristic of this type of movie would be like unnatural sets. So if you look, if you look just at pictures of the set of this movie, um, there's nothing like organic really in it. Even the shadows are painted. Like if you look, look at, look at pictures of like Dr. Caligari's room, like where Cesar sleeps, you see that shadows are painted on the walls, like dark shadows are painted on the walls. So nothing's like organic and real, it's all fabricated, like it's all part of the set. And all the doors and windows and staircases and everything are all very unnatural shaped. Like when they go to Dr. Caligari's office you see like the wall is slanted and his door is like a triangle that they pull open and it's all very very unrealistic very surreal um so i feel like this movie is a really good example of that uh and this movement has had a lot of influence on other filmmakers um one <laughs> that before i even really researched this came into my mind was Tim Burton. I can tell that that man was definitely influenced at least a little bit by this movement. Like you can totally tell, um, especially, I mean in his live action films, but especially like A Nightmare Before Christmas and um, Frank and Weenie and uh, Corpse Bride, that's what I was thinking of, <laughs> like his, uh, um, animated movies you can see that influence a lot everything is very you know distorted kind of almost not very realistic um anyways yeah so i did really enjoy this movie um <laughs> out of the two german expressionist movies i saw nosferatu and cabinet of dr caligari i think i like nosferatu a little bit better but this one was cool i like the twist ending um i can only imagine audiences watching this then and seeing that twist ending um but it was cool and i really liked to see movies that have had an influence on directors that i love now so that's cool uh so if you've seen the cabinet of dr caligari let me know in the comment sections down below what you thought about it uh <laughs> and what you feel about a silent film in general i found it kind of hard to watch not because i found that 
both when I was watching this one and Nosferatu. Not that I found them boring, but <laughs> it was kind of hard to keep my eyes open sometimes. I think it was just the fact that there was no dialogue to kind of break up the music and it was just like kind of constant music. And it was soothing, it wasn't boring, it was just kind of soothing. Um, right, yeah, so if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of my face and hear more of my voice. And thank you if you are subscribed already. And until next time, stay strange. Yes, yes, I've never seen the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. I can't. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but this, this and uh, Nosferatu, which 